Well, the remarkable tale of the life and the death of King Richard III is entering its final chapter this evening. Yes, after two and a half years of meticulous planning, Leicester Cathedral is preparing to host a ceremony unique in English history. The reburial of the last reigning English monarch to die in battle. Well, just after one o'clock this afternoon, the doors of the cathedral closed to visitors. People had come from far and wide to pay their respects to the king. More than 20,000 had filed past his simple oak coffin over the last three days. Officials said the level of interest had taken them by surprise. 20,000 people, we are blown away by that. Um, when I was asked beforehand, what do you expect? I suppose I said, I think there's a lot of interest there. Um, in my little nightmares, I was thinking there'll be 15 people in a dog queuing, but 20,000 people. We've moved heaven and earth to get as many people as we can through the doors in the very limited time available. And it's amazing the interest that the people, not just of Leicester and Leicestershire have shown, but people from all over the world. Incredible stuff. But the cathedral in Leicester, you know, is one of the smallest in the country and perhaps one of the least known. Tomorrow, though, it'll be at the centre of worldwide attention. But what will the reinterment ceremony involve? No one's reburied a lost king before, so how did they decide the order, the tone? Those were some of the questions I put to the Dean of Leicester, the very Reverend David Monteith. So, Dean, here we are on the eve of this ceremony, which you've been working towards for two and a half years now. Um, how do you feel? Uh, it's extraordinary to be right on the edge of re-interring King Richard. I can't tell you how many meetings, planning sessions, complicated decisions that have led to this day. And all the way through it, we kept reminding people, this is the burial of a king and the burial of a man. And here we are, ready, prepared, and looking forward to it. So behind all the, the preparations for, for the ceremonies, there is the story of this man who, when he was buried the first time, probably wasn't accorded a huge amount of respect. That's right. I mean, uh, uh, we know from the evidence that there was a, a hasty burial. I mean, I'm sure the monks, the friars of his day would have prayed sincerely for him, but he certainly didn't receive the burial that would have been normally accorded to a king. Uh, when I saw his battle-scarred body, you know, it really did move me and made me very aware of the need to to honour this person and to make sure the remains are honoured in a really proper way. Is there at all an issue of protocol here, a faith protocol? Because of course King Richard III was a Catholic. Certainly we've wanted to do everything mindful of that, but also our Catholic brothers and sisters have been very gracious and graceful and, and recognise that, that the responsibility is ours. And so we've involved them and indeed at the reinterment service, at the committal after the Archbishop has committed his body to the ground, some words will be spoken by a representative of the Catholic Church. What will be the tone of the service? Will it be um, a celebration? What will people take away from it? Well, you place a coffin inside a church and immediately it's clear that the tone is one of solemnity. There will be the sense of a journey to reinterment and then after reinterment, the tone of the music and uh, the voice will change into a tone of hope because again uh, at that point we become aware of the resurrection. How significant do you think is all of this for the for the city of Leicester this moment of history? I think people's impression of Leicester will change. This cathedral is built on the site of a Roman pagan temple. In other words, this has been a place of significance for 2,000 years. And Leicester as a medieval town, a place of crossing in the heart of England, a place where you know, many of the great figures of history pass through and whose stories shape this place. That's a history that's been buried, now it's revealed. <laughs> 